I've listened to the experts reassure us time and again that a war with North Korea is unlikely. I'm not as certain as they are. The mistake the experts make is analyzing this crisis from a rational, reasonable perspective. That all goes out the window with an irrational president like Donald Trump. Experts try to pacify us by suggesting that adults will likely intervene and save the world from a president who governs by impulse and mood swing. Somebody will stop him, they say, the generals or maybe Congress. But isn't that what we heard during the campaign? Oh yes, let the crazy man-child rant and rave, said the Republican establishment, the donors, the Republican National Committee, the Bush cartel, Paul Ryan, the Koch brothers. But in the end, there was nobody to save us. Nobody spanked Trump and put him in his room. And now he sits in the Oval Office tweeting insults with his hand on a nuclear suitcase that controls 6,800 nuclear bombs. If you want to get inside the president's head to figure out what he might do in North Korea, go out, get drunk, and spin around five times as quickly as possible. That's probably a better way to do it than the normal way we usually assess these matters. Trump's poll numbers are dismal. He's failed to pass meaningful legislation, and special counsel Robert Mueller pursues him like a bloodhound approaching a steakhouse. Trump is an egomaniac, and the biggest narcissist since, uh, well, the actual narcissist of Greek mythology. He is in love with himself and will do anything to ensure his personal survival, even if this means letting Kim Jong-un destroy Seoul, South Korea, Tokyo, or Guam. Trump is desperate to change the subject on Russia and saber-rattling will only last so long. He'll soon need to escalate into an actual war so he can accuse the media or anyone else who asks questions about the Russia investigation of being unpatriotic. This may be his way of attempting to silence his critics. Today, Trump said his original threat to North Korea of fire and fury wasn't tough enough and that the U.S. military was locked and loaded, which made it sound like Trump should be locked up and made the statement while he was loaded. Like his puppet master Vladimir Putin, Trump's power and appeal to his base is that he is a tough guy. He's tough. That's why this um, hand measuring contest with Kim Jong-un could end in a mushroom cloud. Trump is a lousy negotiator who has painted himself into a corner like a rat and he may feel compelled to strike out to salvage his tough guy reputation. The consequences could not be greater. A fight with North Korea could lead to a Great Depression. North Korea would likely retaliate by destroying Seoul, which is the same distance as Washington DC is to Baltimore. A second strike would likely be aimed at Tokyo. Japan is our fourth largest trading partner and South Korea is our sixth largest trading partner. If these major cities are badly damaged or destroyed, this would have an immediate impact on our economy, not to mention the tragic loss of tens of thousands of lives. There is also the risk of World War III. If we dropped a nuclear bomb on North Korea, the fallout could potentially kill citizens in South Korea, Japan, Russia, or China. Would China or Russia sit by idly if we killed their citizens or made major cities uninhabitable? Here's a thought experiment. How would the United States respond if Russia nuked Tijuana and the fallout killed, say, 25,000 people in San Diego and made the city unlivable for decades? You could easily imagine the overwhelming political pressure at home to retaliate, which could spiral quickly into World War III. If the fallout from an American bomb floats over Vladivostok or Beijing, all bets are off on what happens next. Kim Jong-un knows that the location of North Korea makes the consequences of attacking it, especially with nuclear bombs, unthinkable. That is his leverage and that is why he makes these crazy threats. Unfortunately, he is directing these warnings at an American president who might not fully comprehend the situation. Yes, we can and will beat North Korea in a war. The question is, at what cost in blood and treasure? This is a calculation I'm not sure Donald Trump is capable of making, and that's why we are living in precarious, dangerous times.